This week on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Memory Protection Devices, we're launching a shiny new iPhone, meeting Baxter the friendly factory robot, and rioting at Foxconn. You've seen those three-wheeled bikes where people lay down as, the, as they're exercising. Most existing recumbent bike designs place your legs and pedals up in the air. This is a bad solution since it can lead to temporarily numb legs, plus it's just awkward when you tip over. Well now, XYZ space frame vehicles have emerged with a low-cost, lightweight, highly durable construction requiring only simple, handheld, non-specialized tools to produce. The frames are based on a construction system developed by N55 called XYZ Nodes. The frame consists of weather-resistant, lightweight, standard aluminum tubes. Unlike the singular load-bearing tubes seen in traditional bike structures, the main structure is an orthogonal space frame of standard aluminum tubes. The space frame vehicle utilizes a connection principle that is open source, provided under the rules of Creative Commons. So essentially, you can make your own customized bicycle, tricycle, or even a five-wheeled bike cart thing. Rodney Brooks, possibly the world's most celebrated robotist, as well as the founding chairman and CTO of Rethink Robotics, has unleashed a revolution in manufacturing with a friendly-faced factory robot, Baxter. Baxter was designed and built to perform simple, repetitive tasks that are difficult to automate. He was engineered with common sense so he can quickly adapt to changes in his tasks and in his environment in ways that make him a far more versatile automation tool for jobs such as discrete part handling, loading and unloading lines, machine tending, light assembly, and more. Baxter can also be on the factory floor and ready for training in less than one hour after delivery. No additional hardware or software is needed. Now all I have to wait for is rethink robotics to build a made prototype so I can program it to clean my house once a week. A team of researchers at Carlos III University in Madrid developed a windshield wiper to eliminate iron Martian dust from the sensors on spacecrafts that travel to the red planet. The actuator has a brush made up of tef Teflon fibers and was designed to clean the ultraviolet sensors that are a part of the Curiosity mission. Unfortunately, the wiper missed its chance to fly with the most recent rover. Must need to buy a better alarm clock. Given that launching any type of material into, sta into space is incredibly expensive, one of the greatest challenges presented by this type of project was to reduce weight. Because of this, the design relied on actuators based on material with shape memory alloys, a very light nickel and titanium alloy that allows movement when the composite is heated. The researchers are currently working on a second, more elaborate prototype that will be used to clean dust from fixed meteorological stations and will be deployed in a 2014 mission. You get them next time, Jim. As they do every time Apple reinvents the wheel, fans have flocked to Apple stores to buy a shiny new iPhone 5. The new iProduct features a thinner, lighter design with a taller screen, a faster processor, and updated software. Everything you'd hope to expect from a new phone. But don't try the new Maps application if you're on foot. In, in fact, you may not want to throw out your TomTom just yet. Missing from the iPhone 5 is the Google Maps app that has been on the iPhone since its launch in 2007. Users are now finding that it's not even available for download and Apple has taken it upon themselves to create their own map app. The most hyped feature of the new app is a fly-by mode that shows three-dimensional renderings of buildings and other features. It presents a convincing depiction of the canyons of Manhattan, but it has a hard time rendering bridges and highway overpasses, which tend to look wobbly or partially collapse. So it's a surprise when you get there. Apple is hoping to fix the mapping errors as time progresses, but right now people are ending up in the wrong block or being directed into ditches. They're rioting in China. Lock up your jewels and hide your war bonds. What? Is it over? Oh, that was quick. Well, the Chinese factory owned by Foxconn, Apple's iPhone manufacturer, was in turmoil this week when 2,000 workers decided to throw hands as a way to highlight chronic labor tensions. Suggestion box must have been too full. Production is resumed after the new iPhone 5 after a brawl erupted amid a series of violent protests by workers over complaints about pay and working conditions. Foxconn has often faced scrutiny about wages and working hours. It recently raised minimum pay and promised to limit hours that had regularly reached more than 60 hours a week. Turns out they didn't do enough. 
Foxconn, de Foxconn declined to say whether the one-day suspension would affect the iPhone supply chain, as Apple already has a backlog of orders as it ramps up uh, production to meet demand. Now calm down, all you Apple addicts. These are people. You'll get your new toy soon enough. Do you have story ideas for the next episode? Comment below or email us with your story ideas, and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.